Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about PHP and Java. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, why is PHP and Java so hated? And I think I, yeah, I think I suppose that's a fairly a fair question. It's funny because I was, uh, I would really, I really thought that the first thing that people would ask about is, well, we've had a few of those videos. Like it's so common that people ask, why is JavaScript hated? But the PHP and Java, this is, I think this is a first, or maybe. Not Java, but anywho, I digress. So the short answer is that it's very hard for me to just, well, there's a range of opinions on this. I will just give you the most normal ones that I hear. Then well, that's how I take PHP. Usually the reason why PHP is frowned upon by developers is because number one, it's a loosely typed or scripting language, which is a fairly annoying and uh, it, it, it becomes a problem when you work on, on larger projects. Apart from that, the, due to the nature of PHP being a scripting language and also the way it's structured, it has quite a few security exploits that you can use. It's actually f funny because I, w I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, most like uh, PHP is probably one of the most targeted languages for off-the-shelf hackware or like off-the-shelf um, solutions for doing different kinds of different kinds of exploits so everything from sql injections and all of this stuff is very commonly associated with php sites because uh, well let's be honest here most of the web is still kind of run well not all of it but quite a large uh, large amount of the web is running on php so of course being uh, such a popular web language and still having these security exploits makes it a very you see target for a lot of these off the shelf solutions that where more experienced programmers have developed something for less experienced people so that they can use in order to have some fun at somebody else's expense. And apart from that, I would say that it's also considered to be a beginner language. Uh, then what I mean by that isn't that you don't do serious development in PHP because you do. Uh, it's more about well, it's more about that it's a it's a very natural segue into programming for a lot of people. It's something that I've said in a few videos before where some languages like JavaScript and PHP, due to that they are so very easy to get started with, it's actually very common that self-taught developers start with one of these two languages. Ruby is also fairly popular for the self-taught group. Uh, that basically brings you to like, uh, for some people that saturates the market or like the amount of developers that know this language come, kind of goes up, but the quality of developers does not. It's for a lot of developers, PHP is associated with subpar development because of the vast amount of people who have a very limited understanding of professional grade software development who do development within PHP. I mean, if you want to take a real wild car on the quality of a consultant, then PHP is definitely the way to go here. If you're hiring a consultant uh, that does PHP development exclusively, it, it's very tricky for you to figure out how experienced they are on, in general. Some of them are really, really good and some of them are like basically people who took a boot camp and that's it. And the difference is felt. And for a, from a professional perspective, the differences are co quite tangible. You can very clearly see that there is a big, like a gap between who's really good at PHP and who's really bad at PHP. So that's a bit of the criticism as well. So those are the main things I would say for PHP at least. As for, as for Java, it's the same stories usually. I, most people don't like Java because it's very unperformant in terms of just, you know, running. Uh, Java is not one of the fastest languages. Also, quite a lot of people feel frustrated, not just in terms of when it comes to running speed and like having issues with the garbage collector stopping the whole damn program and things like that. Uh, they also have an, a little bit of an issue with the compilation time on larger projects. If you've ever tried to, if you've ever tried to compile a really big Java project, like an enterprise level application type of deal, you can know that a full recompilation can take a long time. A long time and I mean it's uh, especially when you're working with something where you might have a Java backend and you st and then you need to recompile it due to some other minor change and then you know 
it, it slows down people uh, for, for a lot of people having such a long compilation time is very frustrating when you want to get work done because it very much disrupts your workflow right and then I would say apart from that a lot of especially beginners aren't so fond of Java because for some for well educational reasons although Java is one of the world's pro most popular programming languages and pro pro most popular programming languages and it is used quite a lot even so the amount of learning resources are kind of bad like I'm not saying that there's not enough like there's tons I mean there's so so many stack overflow questions and answers and Java is like very present on the web if you search for Java related things you will very likely find an answer but the entropy or like the, the the diversity of the answers that you will get and the experience level and the relevancy of what you get is fairly wide it's very easy to for you to find answers to specific questions but it's very hard for you to find good learning resources in Java I would say uh, it's actually I mean the documentation and all of this stuff is subpar if you compare it to other uh, some other languages that do this really really well and other than that there's also a political perspective to this where there's quite a lot of <clears throat> well Let's just say that Oracle is not the, the IT community's favorite company. Sun used to be a very loved, beloved, uh, beloved company, but Oracle does not have the same sort of same sort of uh, relationship with the developers in uh, just in general. So that's one aspect as well. And then finally, the Java developers face. Uh, uh, not all of them, but quite a few of them face a prejudice against against them due to that they're perceived by some to be less innovative. They are like more conservative when it comes to development. And in, in some fashions, the C sharp developers have this as well, like where it's a very comfortable ecosystem to sit in and people get very uh, allegedly get very complacent very easily. and. It's, uh, it's a pretty much a, a go-to um, choice for a lot of uh, developers who are not necessarily interested in open source or like innovation or anything like that. They just want to get stuff done right. And then like, programming is really, really only a job for them. So, and there's quite a few of these people in Java and C Sharp for a very good reason, because these are the languages that have the most amount of stable jobs. If you want stable employment, these are the languages that you go with in general. So what I want you to take away from this is that these prejudices, I will say that if you look hard enough on these, you will see that they are true. They are true. But I will also argue that this is true for any language. It doesn't matter which one you pick. If somebody, the negative things that people have to say about a language is usually true, depending on your viewpoint. If you look hard enough, you're going to find them to be true. But that's the big illusion that some people have. And that is that, and this is the thing that the internet doesn't tell you at all. And that is that you, you, everybody wants for some reason to get to this point where you can say that <clears throat> The thing that I like is better than this thing I don't like. Regardless of what that is, you need you have this emotional need to say that this is better than that. When the reality is, uh, if I take your favorite language and I look at that hard enough, I'm going to find a bunch of stuff that isn't good with that either. And more, what's highly likely going to happen is that you're just going to dismiss that because you you know this is me saying something that I have found to be true. Never ever underestimate people's ability to justify things to themselves because it doesn't matter how shitty your language is. You can love any language and I can find a bunch of problems with that and hate on that and you're just you're going to ignore it most likely or you go, you're going to be grown up about it and and accept these limitations. And then you're going to say the thing that is true, the only thing that really matters. And that is that, well, yeah, you're kind of right, but I never really have a problem with this because I solve these problems in that way and that way. And that's the truth of the matter. Every language has benefits and downsides. It's just a matter of which set of pros and cons you actually want to deal with. And everybody, considering that all of these languages usually are used for, uh, to success, and to failure in some cases, because that's the truth. You have failure cases and you have success cases. If that's true, then I hope that this opens up your mind a little bit on this entire deal with people hating on a language for a good, for a, you know, a good reason. Because the fact of the matter is that most of the problems that, these, the issue, that you have 
are completely solvable. It's just a matter of do you want those problems and, say others and these sets of benefits or do you want to pick another language and have a different set of problems and benefits because every language has both. Have a great day.